Hi guys, Beyblade here and welcome to my Let's Build series. So following on from my last episode, I want to get the basement area done and hopefully if i got time, a little bit of framework for the main structure. I do want to start off by saying a massive thank you for your love and support. It's, it's truly overwhelming. Uh, really, really appreciated and, you know, keep that feedback coming in the comments, you know, anything to do with like the volumes and things. Yeah, it's really important. So, you know, like if you want to like, subscribe, you know, all that jazz. But without further ado, let's just crack on. So there's a few things I want to do in this episode. Uh, the first being I want to put wooden walls all on the inside of the base, um, all along here, in the same fashion as I have done on the outside. But I do have to do something slightly different just to start off the process, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, also, I want to get the floor down and check the stability of the floor. You know, first time doing this, uh, trying to do things differently. So, you know, things might work, things might not work, but that's the process of the building. We want to explore all of our options. So to start off with the wall, it's the same process as before, as the outside. But as we can see, if we try to press the sh shift key and bring it forward rather than snapping on the wall to avoid the clipping of the stone. The wall is actually slightly taller so if we were to place that one down it means it won't be exactly two floors high, it'd be just above and I'll want to avoid that. So I figured out what we have to do is just remove the wooden floor. We have the stone floor just underneath and we can do the same thing except for the wall hasn't uh, gone up more so it should all work out fine. So bringing that forward, removing that one, snapping that down. And we can see the wooden walls still just clipping through with the wall. So if I place these up here, yep, they're both blue. And that's what we want to achieve. And if I replace my floor, what I might do is replace that wall as well. I wasn't sure if it was slightly off but that looks good to me. So I'm just going to finish off this wall now. Okay so I've finished the inside wall. There's only one detail left that I want to put in this episode and that's the four core logs I want to use in the corners. Now there's something tricky I need to do with that and I'll show you that in a second. But I just want to make a note of the inside of the walls. Now the surface area is smaller inside than it is outside. So what I mean by that and how it affects your build is you can see there that there's four full panels there, but here it's only two thirds. So that means there's a third poking out. Now on this side, I ended up with a third of a panel inside. So two thirds of the panel is actually poking through the wall. Now because the walls are quite thick, I've done a lap round and I couldn't see anything clipping through but just bear that in mind in case you want to try anything like that on your builds. So I'm going to move on to the floors now. So with the floors the first question I asked myself was where am I going to start? So because I've customised these walls by bringing them away from the stone slightly I can't really use the outside wall or the inside sort of wooden walls as a, a starting point. So I'm going to have to use the stone as a reference point, a point to start, because I know that should be all in line. I didn't have to play about with that too much. Also, when I went to place a wall, sorry, a floor, you can see that it's clipping through. So that's the other thing I need to figure out. And what I've decided to do is use one by one floors and making sure that I'm clipping onto the stone, not the wooden walls. As you can see, I'm sort of panning left to right slightly and it's got three snapping points. So I, I want to use the middle one. And that should mean when I build up the wall here, you won't see that there's a gap there. It'll all sort of blend in. So that's going to be my starting point. Now with the clipping of the stone, what I want to do is place another floor directly above, trying to get it as close as I can. 
sort of directly above and then remove the bottom wall, uh, sorry, bottom floor. So by doing that, I should be able to avoid all of the clipping of the stone. Now because these wooden floors, they have a beam on the bottom, I'll show you down here. So you can see this bit of wood here on the bottom. That's what's actually causing it to stay there and not, not just collapse because of stability. So even though it looks like it's floating, that tiny bit of wood underneath the floor is clipping it on. So I should be able to use that all the way across. So I'm going to start off by building the wooden floor one by one, all the way across around the outside and then coming around here. Not worrying about the fireplace, I'm going to cut straight across the back just because some of that's going to be ripped up for the fireplace so I'm going to quickly get this done. And making sure that I'm clipping on to the to the floor, not the wall or the side. Okay, so I've started the floor, got it all the way around. I just need to fill this section in. Uh, I will show you these corner bits. It's a little fiddly what I need to do in order for it not to poke through. With these four corners, I wanted to put the log poles in. I think it's a nice finish um, and it keeps a, a theme of the build. So the issue that I came across, if I put a log pole in like I did on the corners, quite a nice finish there. But you can see there, it just pokes through. So in order to solve that, what I would have to do is remove the wooden floor and also the stone floor underneath. You want to get your wooden beam and with the cursor on this stone stone floor next to it just want to lower it slightly so the wooden beam is directly under the core wood but just a little bit lower so now if we if we remove the core wood and then holding shift making sure that the cursor is on the wooden beam and also found we can insert it more which I think comes to a nicer nicer finish you can place it down it's a good finish there and you can see the top of it just there which is absolutely fine but the main thing is you can see it's not clipping through the floor so once I've done that, I mean you can remove that or leave it there if you'd like. Place your stone wall back and then your floor. And now we've got a nice finish that's slightly inset rather than poking out more. And also it's not clipping at the top. And I don't think that little bit is much of a problem. So I'm going to go ahead now and finish laying the floor check the stability after with you guys I'm just gonna leave sort of this section empty because I want to make a decision on where I want the spiral staircases but I'm gonna cover the fireplace completely that's just because when I come to it I could just tear it up it wouldn't take a second but I just want to see what it would be like okay so I have finished the flooring and I've left the spaces for the spiral staircases now I just want to double check the stability. I want to make sure that it's blue all the way around the outside. That's because I'm going to be building my framework for the structure. Uh, snapping on or connecting to these points. And the bit of green in the middle is not really an issue. And as expected there's some lighter green pieces just here. But that shouldn't be an issue. So I'll quickly show you the downstairs. So the spiral staircase leads down here and as you can see you've got a nice big open space here and considering we're starting with sort of blue pieces there to build our framework for the structure having this sort of additional room is quite nice could be a loop room sort of a 
bedroom, workshop, you know, really, really depends. See how the, the building looks and see what feel we get for it. So the next thing I want to address is this gap around here. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so this is what I've come up with so far. It's uh, a nice little bit of beading that goes around the outside. It's uh, level with the floor and slightly inset from the wall. And just a, a nice finish overall, I think. So in order to do this, all I've done, and bearing in mind this is very temperamental, sometimes you have to try it in different parts of the wall. But all you do is you get your two meter wooden beam and just simply snap it on top of the, the wall. Now if you try to connect to the side, you just have to move your cursor around until you see it flip to where you want it. And that's it. Sometimes it doesn't work. If it doesn't, then all you do is you place your beam to start and then holding the shift key, you can just play about with it, move it around until you want it wherever you need it to be. But in this case, it will snap on perfectly. And all you do is remove the first part and just keep snapping on round. Okay, so I'm gonna end the episode there. Uh, would have liked to have got a bit more done, but the things that I did do did take a bit of time to figure out. Um, so, you know, just wanna say thank you again for watching and your love and support is just, yes, yeah, it means a lot. So thank you very much guys and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.